Hello my lovelies and welcome to my channel. Today I'm reading from r slash nuclear revenge. Never pee off a rich redneck. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. This is a story about my grandparents' friend. I was a young teen, but given the outcome, this story has stuck with me. I've sat on this story for a while, but it's so satisfying to see a gaggle of Karens taken down a notch that I figured I'd share. For the sake of this story, we will call my grandparents' friend William. Now, my grandparents knew William from way back. My grandmother knew him from school, and my grandfather met him after marrying my grandmother. Anyways, in the 60s, Grandma was a manager at the 7-Eleven. William led a crew that went there every day. It was the only gas station in a 30-minute radius, so everyone knew everyone in that sleepy coastal town kind of way. Now, one day William was doing a job down on the waterfront and slipped, fell, and broke his back. While he was healing from the operation and was broke, as a joke, my grandma would always make sure to send him something to eat that she'd pay for when the crew would come to grab their snacks and gas up, knowing William would simply skip the meal to save the money for his own family. My grandpa also took him to several doctor appointments, since William couldn't drive for a while and his tiny little wife couldn't wrangle him into a car by herself. William never forgot that. Twenty years later, when he sold off his now very successful business and was a millionaire about twenty times over, he promptly told 90% of the world to go to hell, but kept those that had always been there for him close. Meanwhile, he never moved from his house that he'd had since before he was rich. His only concessions to his wealth were trips with his wife to see the world and buying up quite a few acres of the forested land around him. If you weren't his friend, you'd take him for every other blue-collar worker in the town. There was absolutely nothing obvious to show that he was worth tens of millions of dollars. After his wife died in the 90s, William decided to take up a new hobby. As he lived outside of the city limits, he set up a sawmill and woodworking shop got all the proper permits and everything. The saws were in a big old enclosed building in the middle of all that land, so in all honesty, so no harm, no foul, right? Wrong. The family that owned the forest behind William's land had just sold it to developers. Thus, the new luxury-gated neighbourhood, the first in the area, was born. Enter a plethora of Chads and Karens, who were mostly from up north, and had moved down south to take advantage of the better weather and the nearby beach. It didn't take long before they decided to take offence to his little business venture on the other side of the ten-foot-tall wall of their neighbourhood, because it didn't fit in with the image of their community. You know, the community he was decidedly not a part of. So, they sued him. Didn't even try to start a dialogue with him. Just up and sued him. William was livid. He was your typical coastal redneck, and he would be damned if those damn Yankees told him what to do on his own property. That was not within city limits, nor located in an HOA. William countered with professional noise studies that showed that some of the kids in that neighbourhood drove vehicles that made more ambient noise than his little operation. Nope. The people in the neighbourhood simply threw more money at the lawyers to continue on with the lawsuit. Essentially, their plan was to bleed him dry. Their lawyers, who were not locals, actually told William's lawyer that he should probably advise his client to close the shop so that he wouldn't end up bankrupt due to the resources being thrown at him from the homeowners. Due to the relatively modest surroundings of his home, the neighbours nor their lawyers had any idea the man was actually richer than just about all of them put together. All they saw was an older dude who drove a beat-up 80s model truck and wore Dickies jeans and work shirts that lived in what appeared to be a relatively modest home, especially compared to their McMansions. When William's lawyer told him about that conversation, William lost his blinking mind. I clearly remember his screeching into my parents' driveway in that old work truck, cussing up a storm and ranting and raving before he even got in the house. He came to our house. Why? Because my grandmother, bless her heart, was known as one of the most giving people in the world, unless you peed her off. 
If you hurt her or someone she cared about, she became one of the most vindictive a-holes that could be found in that town. I'm not kidding when I say that her ability for revenge served cold was legendary amongst the locals. So William had come to the house for a dose of her deviousness. Us kids weren't allowed inside during that conversation, but after he left that day, I later heard the adults talking about how he proceeded to hire quite a few private investigators to see if there would be any dirt to dig up on them. By them, I meant the dozens of people in that neighbourhood that were a part of the lawsuit. Lo and behold, there was apparently copious amounts of dirt to be had. I still remember him positively crowing about it to my grandparents one fine summer day months later. That 60-something-year-old man was as gleeful as the proverbial kid on Christmas morning. Why? Because after he learnt what his little private army dug up, he started making some phone calls to various acquaintances in high places. The ensuing fallout meant that the lawsuit was dropped. There was quite a list of misdeeds that were discovered, but the ones that I heard talked about by the adults that stick out are there were more than a handful of individuals that owed back child support. William very helpfully had the private investigators provide the mother's updated address and employment information so that they could pursue said child support slash garnishment if they wanted to. On top of that, the IRS became very interested in several of those people as well as various other neighbours. Finally, one household ended up in prison because the investigators realised that they were substance dealers. The pictures of the transactions caught by the PIs were helpfully handed over to the Sheriff's Department. Substances are bad kids. Moral of the story, never pee off a rich redneck. Well, my friends, I certainly hope that you enjoyed the story. I loved it. I love a good bit of nuclear revenge, and those people got exactly what they deserved. I like a grandma like that. I could be a grandma like that. Anyway, if you did enjoy the story, please like, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment. I am in the process of answering quite a few comments, so I will be doing that as soon as possible. Anyway, until next time, it's so long, farewell, pit pit, cheerio, much love, and bye.